Hey, Sean. Today I wanted to talk about microphones again because I love them. Now, I, I've, I've used a handful of microphones for a long time that, that I love. I've used shotgun mics to do interviews. I've talked before about I don't like using laughs um, because I don't like that you can see them a lot of the time. And there's ways to hide them, but I never get the same result, the same good noise canceling result as I typically do with an overhead boom mic. Um, and when I stand at my desk, I typically use this Audio-Technica A2020. The shotgun mics I use, um, I've made videos about my NTG-4. Um, I since replaced that with an NTG-3, or not replaced it, but supplemented it with an NTG-3. And that's like my go-to microphone. But lately, as I've been doing more and more interviews, I realized that the NTG-3 or any shotgun microphone may not actually be the best microphone for interviews and bringing a side address condenser microphone to an interview is not really an option because you've got to see it or crop in such a way that it's, it's really hard to get this mic close enough to somebody to be effective without it also being in the shot. So I started wondering what is the best microphone for these situations and I came across uh, the pencil condenser microphone. But before we understand why this is important, Time to come clean on a couple things. One, I have not been using this mic so far. I've been using the Rode NT5 pencil condenser microphone. Also at the same time, I'm recording with an NTG3 shotgun microphone, sort of the Rode, you know, principal standard microphone. It's their flagship microphone uh, shotgun. It's what I use for most of my interviews until this little guy arrived yesterday. And I have my AT2020 recording here as well. So I've got three different options, but the main one you've heard so far is the NT5 pencil condenser microphone. Now to understand why this is important. We're going to look at sound waves for a second, and I promise I won't get too nerdy, uh, not only because I think it can be kind of boring, but also because I don't fully understand everything and all the nuance and complication to all of this. But a sound wave moves up and down. It, it, it looks literally like a wave. This is, this is a sound wave as drawn out here. Um, and interestingly, it goes up and it goes down, and that's the vibration we feel. But you may have heard something called phase delay. And phase delay is interesting because if we add, let's say, the exact same sound, but we delay it just a little bit, this happens. If we delay it perfectly so that when, when one wave is at its peak, the other is at its valley, and vice versa, what happens coming out of the speakers and hitting your ears is that these things completely cancel each other out. So it would be silent. You could completely negate a sound source by just miking it with two sources and spacing those a little bit so that the, the phase delay hits. While this sounds bad, this is actually the reason why shotgun microphones work. Shotgun microphones don't ignore sound and only pick up what's in front of them because they're long. Shotgun microphones actually use phase cancellation to get rid of that noise around the side. And to illustrate my point, if you've ever used like a Zoom H6 or H4n or anything like that, it has the microphones in a little X pattern. And it does that so that the source, the, the sensor, the, uh, the actual diaphragm on both of those microphones is as close as possible uh, to, to each other. They want that sound source to hit those two microphones at the exact same time. If they straightened them, it's possible that if the voice was coming from the side, you've got your two microphones, it's going to hit this microphone first and then this microphone, and you'll get this phase delay coming from your two microphones, and you'll actually lose some of the frequency, some of the sound. So. That's why they, they put them in that XY pattern. But interestingly, the way that a shotgun microphone works is this. We're going to add things to this slowly, but a shotgun microphone is always positioned in a way where you're going to have your sound source that you want in front of the microphone, and it cancels out things from the sides. And it doesn't do this, again, by ignoring those voices or, or being so uh, you know, pencil focused that it, it, it doesn't hear those things. It uses phase delay, and, and here, let me explain. 
when we've got our little dude talking directly into the microphone, that, that sound source is directly in front, and so it's all hitting that, that front of the microphone at the same time. And then when we have, let's say, other voices, or an air conditioner, or you know, ambient noise, doors, cars, whatever it is, when those things are on the side or behind the microphone, this happens. Let's say there's a radio on. So I, I've added a little sound wave to our guy. But let's say there's a radio on back here. Because of the long microphone and the slits on it, what it actually does is it lets the sound waves from this hit the side there, and the side there, and the side there, and the side there. And because those sound waves are hitting the microphone at these different lengths, it's actually creating that phase delay, where the sound waves that hit the mic first are probably the blue ones. We'll call them the blue ones. And toward, you know, four inches down the mic, those sound waves are hitting it again, and that's offsetting it a little bit, and so you have this natural phase cancellation of the noise that's coming from anywhere except directly in front of the microphone. The waves that go directly in front of the microphone go right in, hit that condenser, works great, sounds great, and any of the noises on the side, because they're hitting the microphone at different lengths, it's actually hitting it just a millisecond later, and that's enough to cause this phase cancellation to get rid of all of that noise that's coming uh, from around the sides. Different frequencies move at different speeds and those wavelengths are different and longer, and so that's why different microphones are different lengths because some of the wavelengths may be canceled out in the first little inch of the microphone, some of them may take four inches. Rode makes the NTG-8, which is this massive wand of a microphone, and that microphone is so long that it cancels out a ton of the low end and high end because there's enough room for phase delay to occur all along that microphone and cancel those noises out. So this all sounds fantastic until you come inside. When you're out in a field, when you're in a huge open space, this shotgun mic is gonna work perfectly because you're talking right into the microphone. But what happens when you're in a small, echoey, indoor room is that you're talking into the microphone and then your sound waves are bouncing off the ceiling and they're coming down and hitting the mic again. And what this does is it starts to cancel out some of the frequencies and you get phase delay cancellation of certain frequencies in your voice. And so you may notice that if you use a shotgun microphone inside, you may sound deeper and beefier. And it's not because the mic is good at picking up bass, it's because the high parts of your frequency are getting canceled out with phase delay because your voice is hitting the ceiling, the wall, the floor, and coming back and hitting the microphone again. And what that does is it cancels out those frequencies. And so you end up with a different sounding voice because of phase delay, because of the bounce and the echo of, of the sound waves. So the solution to this is the pencil condenser microphone. And the pencil condenser microphone is very similar to a shotgun, except it doesn't have this long empty tube with slits on it, which is designed to create phase delay by letting sounds hit the sensor at different times. So when you compare a pencil condenser microphone to a shotgun microphone, you can see that this whole, a shotgun microphone is empty. This whole tube on the end is completely empty. It's got, you know, fabric or, you know, it's got diffusion in there, but it's an empty tube that's just designed to let sound waves hit it at different times and to space that out almost artificially. And a pencil condenser microphone is very much the same thing, same guts, except it doesn't have this long hollow tube. And that enables you to do a lot more indoors because you're not losing any of your frequency to phase delay in the same way that you would to a shotgun microphone. So as I made this video, I've got these different levels balanced and, and I've got a compressor applied to all of them as I always do. But this is the NT5, this is the NTG3, and this is the AT2020 as I stand here. So you can hear the differences without any effects applied, but what I end up having to do if I use a, 
a shotgun microphone inside is I have to bring down the bass using the equalization. I have to bring down the bass so that it's not so muddy and overpowering that it just sounds too bassy. And I know it can, it all comes down to feel, but at the same time, you don't want just an overly muddy, deep, bassy sound, especially as people are watching things um, in their, on trains, on their phone, you know, or, or in the car or on a bus. When, when there's ambient noise that's in that bassy range, you can actually, because of how all of it's hitting your ears, it can be hard to understand something that you're watching because of the ambient noise around you, not what's even coming out of the speaker. But so a lot of the times when we equalize audio for different outlets, if I know people are gonna be watching um, on a small device, I'll make sure that the equalization pushes the mids and the highs a little bit so that it can cut through some of the noise and take advantage of the smaller speakers that are in these devices to be more clear. And especially with podcasts, if you listen to good podcasts, they don't sound that bassy. It's not this deep, overwhelming bass sound. It's, it's more clear. And they do that, and I did a whole episode about how I do the, uh, how I do equalization for podcasts and how I record them. But like if you listen to NPR, they, they're not tinny, but it's very clear sounding and they do that by cutting the bass a little bit so that it doesn't interfere with bass that you may be hearing because you're driving in your car or you're riding along. A lot of people are listening to podcasts or the radio when they're on the move, not when they're sitting in a quiet room. And so by engineering your audio to account for that to make sure that you're not competing for those same frequencies, you can make sure that your audio comes out very clear. So these are the three mics that I've been using and when I'm indoors in a place that's a little echoey, a shotgun microphone may end up sounding a little weird or sound a little off just due to phase delay. So as you approach your different scenarios, pick the microphone that's right for you. And shotgun microphones can be expensive and they're fantastic, amazing pieces of, of technology. But understand if you're shooting a lot of indoor interviews in small echoey places, if you're in a conference room, if you're in an office, if you're trying to get good audio somewhere that has a little bit of echo, a shotgun microphone probably isn't the best choice for you. So keep that in mind because also these pencil condenser microphones are a lot cheaper than some of the shotgun microphones. I believe this NT5 is around $220 and the NTG3 is around $700. So be, be selective about where you use which tool because different tools are right for different jobs. But if you know you're gonna be filming a lot of indoor if there's not thick carpeting or you know uh, noise canceling curtains and stuff like that, your shotgun microphone may end up hurting you a little bit and giving you some weird sounding audio. So pick the right tool for the job and if you know that you're gonna be in one of these situations where there's gonna be a little bit of echo, choose a microphone that's not going to hurt you because it doesn't deal with echo well when it's focused on the right sound source. That's it, I hope you found this interesting because this stuff absolutely fascinates me and I've become more and more obsessed with audio the more and more I do video production. So if you have any questions, feedback, if, I'm, if you think I'm totally wrong, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any questions about how anything else works, I'll do my best to answer it. And this stuff, researching it and being a part of it is very exciting to me. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later.